18. Um, when we begin reading, we'll begin reading in verse 1. But this is very familiar as far as the core of this upcoming text we're about to read. Yet it has a beginning that has not been expounded upon. At least I've not heard it be expounded upon much. That we shall go into as well and drive home the main thrust of this incredible story of the miraculous. Now God has already appeared to Abraham by this time. He's instructed his covenant. He's told Abraham to call his own wife Sarah, Sarah instead of Sarai. He changed her name. He changed Abraham's name too. His name was Abram. And now it's Abraham. And he said to him that she would have a son. And Abraham laughed. He laughed at the fact that God was telling him. And at this time, Abraham is 99 years old. about to turn 100. He's about to celebrate a birthday. And he's telling him. Uh, and Sarah's not been told this yet. He's telling Abraham, the Lord one on one with Abraham, has told Abraham, you're going to have a son. Mm -hmm. And he, he laughed at it. And the Lord comes back to him. Now, when the Lord comes back, he's not alone. He's got a, a purpose for why he comes back. And there's multiple reasons and multiple things that he's going to accomplish with his two helpers that are with him. And I want you to read with me. Uh, Genesis chapter 18 it says, Then the Lord appeared to him, Abraham, by the terebinth trees of Mamre, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. Verse 2 says, So he lifted his eyes, Abraham did, and looked, and behold, three men, three men now, were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the ground, and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on. By your servant. I want you to skip down to verse 9. Verse 9 says, Then they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? Uh -huh. So Abraham said, Here in the tent. And he said, The Lord said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Not today, but she's going to have one. Sarah was listening now in the tent door, which was behind them. And maybe she was eavesdropping a little bit, but she was listening. And in verse 11 it says, Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed. Somebody shout, had passed. The age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself. She laughed to herself. She kind of giggled under her breath a little bit. But she laughed within herself. Saying, After I have grown old, Shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I be, surely bear a child since I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Mm. At the appointed time, hallelujah, at the appointed time, somebody needs to receive this right. At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh. What me? For she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. You laughed. Now I want you to look over at chapter 21. You can turn there or we can turn there for you if you're on the screen. Chapter 21, verse 1. says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah church as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have born him a son in his old age. She's laughing now. It's a different kind of laugh. Amen? You can turn back to 18, because we'll review that, and we'll go to 21. Amen? But I know this is familiar scripture. I know that you have heard this time and time again. But this is going to be an example that the Lord wants to relate uh, a message to you today. And I want you to receive this today. Amen. Now, if we're honed in and focused in on other things going on today or that we have planned for the week, you're going to miss an incredible blessing today. Amen. Not because I'm preaching, but because God is here. 
and that His Spirit is here. We have welcomed the Holy Spirit into this place. I'm so glad we are singing that song in this church. Amen? I uh, mean, we had to move that song up uh, ahead a little bit in the line of songs that we are learning because we knew that it was a special song that has a special meaning, amen. And every time you come in here, I want you to be expecting something special that God is going to do in your life, in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, amen. And I believe that God has already done some things in the time of worship, but He has yet to do some more incredible things in this time of the sharing of the Word. Is there anybody in this church today that is really, 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 really ready for the Word of the living God? Hallelujah. Father, we come to you today. And God, we're so thankful to be in your house, to be assembled here. In the place, God, that you said the gates of hell cannot, shall not prevail against. And so, Lord, we have come together, God, to fellowship and to love one another and to edify each other. But to most of all, give you praise, give you honor, and worship you simply because you are God. And we love you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you are doing. And all that you are yet to do. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you and honor you today. We thank you for this word that you have handed down, God, and have laid down in our spirit to share with these folks today. God, we love you, Lord. We love them. We know you love us. And we love you, God. And we praise you. May we leave here changed and challenged, God, ready to take on, Lord God, any adversity in our lives, Lord God, by what you teach us in this message today. We're thankful, Lord. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Shout amen. amen. Shout amen. amen. I give him a hand clap of praise for his word. Amen. amen. Today's message is titled, The Waiting Does Not Always Have to Be the Hardest Part. Say it with me. The waiting is not always or does not always have to be the hardest part. Amen. Yeah, I know that many of you, if you're an 80s rock and roll fans, you remember the Tom Petty and Heartbreaker song, The Waiting is the Hardest Part. We'll kind of get into that in a little bit. But, uh, uh, that you know, that song may have kind of helped uh, this message along a little bit. But God gave me the title to this message when I was reading this text. And uh, it popped in some waiting songs. We played a waiting song in the worship set today. And certainly, there's been many songs about waiting. But the act of waiting is a difficult thing for many people. Just waiting in general can be tough for those who are active. Got always to do something. And on the move. Therefore, waiting slows them down a bit. Whether you are in a waiting room or you're by the phone or you're by the mailbox, not many people like to wait. And you can go ahead and say amen to that. Thank you, Sister Lisa. Honest about the fact that you don't like to wait. Huh? <laughs> waiting in a restaurant too long. You know, waiting in a restaurant too long. It burns you up. I know it does. <laughs> waiting in a restaurant too long may aggravate us or make us feel disrespected or shortchanged. Amen. You know, but you know, sometimes we need to handle things like a Christian and say, this waitress that's been on her feet. All day long, all night long, we don't know what she's dealing with at home. I'm just going to let this slide by right now. But we can help them out. I had a waitress wait on me last week, and she came to the, the, the table, and bless her heart, I thought she was asleep. Yes. She was standing there like this. And she said, what would you like? I said, get me a glass of water with lemon. Get my wife a glass of water with lemon. Get my little boy a little uh, kid's drink. And get yourself the strongest coffee that you have in this place. Bless your heart. Don't you fall asleep on the way from here to the kitchen. Amen. But I've heard it said that on Sundays, some people don't like to work on Sundays because they don't want to deal with the church crowd. Now, how bad is that? That ought to be a day. That they say, oh, I want to work today because I know I am going to deal with some awesome people. Amen, amen. So we need to go in there. We need to represent Jesus. We need to bless Him. Go ahead and have a talk with Him and say, look, I like to bless. I like to sow. Amen. If you give us the service, the best service you can, I promise you I'm going to bless you with God. God's going to bless you today. Amen. Hallelujah. You give a super duper tip. Amen. 
But we do not like to wait. Amen? And if we do have to wait, we like to be accommodated in some way. You know? uh, but it may aggravate us. It may make us feel disrespectful and short, short change while waiting for critical test results can cause us stress and worry. There's many people here in the sound of my voice has had to wait for critical test results. And that waiting is so hard. That waiting is difficult. Not know, and if you're blessed enough to have somebody with you, amen, to hold your hand and be there with you, and you didn't have to go through it alone, amen, thank God for that. But if you were alone, know that the Lord was with you, amen. Hallelujah. But we know that waiting through those critical test results can cause us stress and cause us worry. After a long wait, though, after a long wait, what is our reaction when the breakthrough finally comes? Amen. Now, now, if we're praying about a breakthrough to come, and the breakthrough happens next week, the, that, that prayer is still fervently in our minds and on our spirit. Amen? And, and we're like, yes, God, yes, God, look what you did, God. Amen, amen. But if it takes years and years and years and years, or lots and lots of time, we might not be praying about that anymore. And when God finally does grant the breakthrough after a long wait, we don't recognize it. And if we hear it foretold over our lives, we might laugh and scoff and say, huh, what? Huh? It ain't happening about that. It ain't going to happen. And so we don't know how we're reacting to when our breakthrough finally comes. Abraham's wife Sarah had waited a long time for a child. She had waited so long for a child, she began to realize in her own mind, it's not going to happen. I have asked God for a child. I have asked Him. Asked him. I have prayed. I have done all that I can do. I'm going to have to do something else because Abraham's got this incredible calling on his life. We, he's taking a covenant with God. God is leading him away from where we have lived. and He's, told, he's hearing from God. And God is speaking to him. If I can't bear him a son, I'm going to have to do something. Because I want to help my husband. I want to help our, our lineage. And so she goes to her maidservant, Hagar. You know the story. And she grants permission. And we're all adults in here. I know the kids are over here. But we're all adults. And she grants permission for Hagar to sleep with her husband. Ooh, that don't even sound like does it? Ooh, we'll get it off on right now. She gives her maidservant permission to have a child. By her husband. Amen. I'm trying to keep it PG. G. Disney's not even G anymore. Huh? That was what I But she, give, he, she gives permission for that to happen. Trying to do something in her own, uh, her own mind. Her own determination. You've got to watch sometimes what you're determined to do. Amen. You've got to watch what, what is leading you in that determination. Of that thing that you've got to see happen and you've got to receive, amen? And then if God don't move and you start moving and then you want to fake it and say, God's leading me to do this. No, God, not you are. Amen. That's why it's blowing up in your face. It blew up in her face. Yes, she helped create a situation that she got bitter about. And she became so jealous of Hagar that she ran her off. Amen. God says, you've created this. I'm not going to leave them hanging. I'm going to bless them too. And he did he blessed the descendants, the descendants of Ishmael. You go over there and see the lush, lavish uh, palaces that the people of Ishmael have. It's like something out of a fairy tale over there. Amen? And so she made that happen. It didn't even happen in the next generation when Isaac's own wife, Rebecca, wanted to take some stuff and she wanted Jacob to get a blessing instead of Esau and, and so she did some things to manipulate there and you know it causes problems when we try to force God's hand and make God's will happen in your life it, 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 it causes problems when you're not called of God to do a certain thing in ministry and you call yourself to do it it's not going to flow it's not going to work you're going to hit brick walls and so it says in verse 1 of chapter 18 of Genesis, it says the Lord appeared to Abraham. It said it appeared to Abraham. And so we see that the Lord has made an appearance in the Bible, in the Old Testament. And it says in verse 2 that when Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, behold, three men were standing by him. One of those men 
was the Lord. Now when God comes in the form of a man, who is He? That's okay. You got it. Let me correct the answer. You can't separate Him. You can't separate the Son from the Father and the Holy Spirit. He's all in one. How can you say that, Pastor? Well, because Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. He said, when you've seen the Father, you've seen me. And when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus is the face of God. When God put Himself in the form of a man, He put Himself in the form of Jesus the Son. Amen? And so we get excited in the book of Daniel when it says that there was a fourth man in the fire and even a pagan man named Nebuchadnezzar gets excited and recognizes that he's the Son of God. Because if God wants somebody to realize it, He can make an atheist, He can make a satanic worshiper, He can make anybody that don't know nothing about Jesus realize something if He wants to. And so, and so God shows up there. But I'm here to tell you, gee, that's not the only place. Jesus, we, we see hints of Him in the priesthood of Melchizedek. And we're going to review that on a Wednesday night. When you see that in your bulletin, you need to come that Wednesday night. We're going to do an awesome little one-night Bible study called The Mystery of Melchizedek. Amen. And we're going to simply find Jesus in it. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to be blessed by that. But here is an early appearance of the Lord in the form of a man with two people with him. Now the two people with him were angels. And we've been talking about uh, a, a guy by the name of Lot for the past few weeks. And remember angels came to rescue him. So the Lord was there for various reasons. He was there. He had him two angelic agents from heaven that he was going to send out to Sodom and Gomorrah to burn it up and pull Lot out of there. And he was also there to reconfirm some things that he had told Abraham about him and his wife Sarah bearing a child in their old age. So the Lord had some business to do, and he came down from heaven to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so three men are standing by him, and when he saw them, look, Abraham realizes it. What, is, what does he do? He bows himself to the ground and worships and calls the Lord, Lord. Amen. And it says in verse 9, they said to him, where is Sarah your wife? This concerns her, what we're about to tell you. And he says, she's inside. And they begin to speak to him. I don't, I'm not persuaded by the scriptures that she come out because it says she stayed in the tent. And it says, the Lord said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. Then there's going to be a process in this. There's going to be a waiting process. You're not going to get this right now. Amen. It's going to be a process. It's going to be according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now, Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. I could just uh, kind of uh, see her behind the door saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> She was eavesdropping. Eavesdropping. And it said, Now, Abraham, in verse 11, and Sarah were old. All right? Now, he goes ahead and tells you, they were old. That he was almost a hundred years old, and she was uh, ninety, and well advanced in age. And it says that Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. I like it, Reverend Larry, when the Bible tells us of how impossible something is. I like it when the Bible points out the diversity and the obstacles that stand in front of God's people. Because then it makes it even greater, even sweeter, when God takes the situation and busts it right wide open. Amen? And it says that it, she had passed the age of childbearing. Meaning, she wasn't, her body was not supposed to be able to bear a child anymore. She was not a young woman anymore. Verse 12 says, therefore Sarah laughed within herself. She laughed in herself, not thinking that anybody outside could hear and she was laughing, laughing. And she was kind of saying to her, herself, after I have grown old, so I have a pleasure in the Lord being up all the way. Is this going to happen to me? You know how sometimes we kind of speak under the phone. You know, what are going to happen to me? I appreciate you coming by and everything. You know. They don't need to come around here and get my hoops up. I've been this day for a long time. I'm 90 years old. Sound right. Mm -hmm. But verse 13 says, And the Lord said to Abraham, Why is she laughing? I say something funny. That's what the Lord said. Why is she laughing? And then, Shall I surely 
a pair of child since I'm old. Why she say this? And then he has to say, is anything too hard for the Lord? And he's saying that to us today. What don't you believe? What don't you believe about your life and the potential that God has in you? What don't you believe about the destiny that God has that set up for you in your life? Amen? Hallelujah. He says, and the Lord said to Abraham, why does she laugh? Is anything too hard for me? He says, at the appointed time, I will return to you. Meaning there is a time mark that I'm going to return to you. I know you've not seen it yet. I know she has waited for decades and decades. I know she has cried about it. I know she has prayed. I know she has fasted. Amen. And maybe you have cried about some things. Maybe you have prayed about some things. Maybe you have planned about some things that have not happened yet in your life. But God says, Amen. If I said it, I'm going to do it. in this thing. And Sarah shall have a son. She will. But Sarah denied it when he called her out saying, I did not laugh. No, no, me. I didn't laugh. For she was afraid. And he said, no, 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 no. You did laugh. Go ahead and admit it. You don't believe this can happen. But I'm going to show you that it can. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a lot of people right now they don't believe a lot of things about God. Amen. They don't believe God can move here. They don't believe God can do this. They don't believe in God at all. They don't believe that the Lord is coming back. Amen. But there's coming a day. Amen. There's coming a day. Amen. When every knee is going back. Every tongue is going to confess that it's Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's a laugh of disbelief. And that can also be translated into the, a term called scoffing. It's scoffed at. Oh, that's not true. There's no way that can happen. But look, in chapter 21, Genesis, it says that the Lord did visit her as he had said he would. And the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Again, if God says it, he will do it. Verse 6 says, And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh for me. And every time we, we speak of this in church, till this day, there's always a little bit of a chuckle. <laughs> a hundred year old man. God is not your old wife pregnant. Well, I believe it goes in the Bible. There ain't no way that can happen today. Don't tell Grandpa that. <laughs> you want me to grab my love? <laughs> I'm grabbing my sit back smile. <laughs> no. Before technology, before medicine, before all these other things, life changing drugs or any kind of breakthrough serum that could be invented, God did something way thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago that we are still talking about and we might even chuckle a little bit about today. God did it then. But they had to wait. They had to wait. They had to wait, church. God did exactly what He said He'd do for Abraham and Sarah. And we must trust God during the waiting process. And allow the anticipation to bring us joy, not stress. Not stress. What do we do? How do we act while we wait? I told you this title sounds a lot like an old rock song from back in the day. The Waiting is right. Anybody ever heard that song? The Waiting is the Well, I like that. Right. I can turn into an annoying song. Again. But it says in the song, the waiting is the hardest part. The things that they're going through, and they're having to wait, don't let things get you down. And, and the waiting, having to wait is the hardest part. If you just get through that waiting process, it's a hard thing. But then, my life was introduced to another great song that we sang this morning called While I'm Waiting. And it came in the, uh, the first time I ever heard it was I was in a movie theater watching a great movie called Fireproof. 
at starring Kirk Cameron, and it was a Christian film, and it showed you from the start of this man, his marriage is falling apart. He gets witnessed to, he gets saved, he starts loving on the Lord, he starts to read his Bible, and he's praying. It looks like there's another guy trying to come in and, and cause problems uh, in the marriage. It doesn't look like they're going to get back together at one point, but he just keeps loving her and keeps speaking life into her, and he keeps speaking life into that marriage, and then all of a sudden, in the midst of that moment, it was so powerful. That song plays. And it shows what he's doing. It shows him praying. It shows him reading his Bible. It shows him doing all the things that he's doing during the waiting process. And, I, and when we sing that song in the church, and I know it wasn't a, a praise and worship song, but I didn't care because I had people tell me before, you know, you don't always do praise and worship music in your church. I say, don't limit God. This is a, you do praise and worship sometimes, but a lot of times you do radio singles. I said, God moves in those radio singles. Amen? Are you telling me that while I'm waiting is not a quote-unquote worship song that we need to quit singing in this church? Do you know how many lives it blesses? It matches my spirit because I see people in the office saying, I'm waiting for something too, and I need God to move in it. But until He does, I'm going to serve Him and I'm going to worship Him. And so that tells me that the waiting is not, I'm sorry Tom Petty, I love you, but, but it, the waiting is not always the hardest part when it comes to being a Christian. Because that waiting process is a gift from God. And sometimes it's a gift we don't want. Because we don't get what we want right then. We have to wait. And so we don't want the waiting process. But God says you've got to have the waiting process. Because you've got to have time to grow. Amen? When a child is conceived, it's not born the next day or an hour later. It takes nine months of that baby growing and being nurtured and being taken care of. And the baby gets larger and larger and larger until it finally is ready to be birthed. And many times that thing that God wants to break through in your life, he can't, He's not going to do it overnight. Now, He could if He wanted to. Amen. But you have to wait for that waiting process, that development process, that growing process to take place before the breakthrough happens. Amen? The act of waiting can be a time of development and growth. If you're taking notes this morning, write this down. The Holy Spirit gave this to me. Positive anticipation can breed... And will birth faith-filled expectancy. I'm going to break it down in a moment. Positive anticipation can breed, the R-E-E-D, breed and it will birth faith-filled expectancy. Meaning, if I'm anticipating something, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm waiting. I'm waiting for it to happen. And as I am anticipating it, and as I'm staying positive, as I'm anticipating, amen, my faith begins to get built up in me. And the more my faith gets built up in me, then I start claiming that thing. And the more I start claiming that thing, I start expecting it to happen. Meaning there is no way in the world it's not going to happen because I'm expecting it. Amen? I was expecting it. Hallelujah. Praise God. So positive anticipation can bring and will birth faith-filled expectancy. Because listen, if God's answer is not an immediate yes or no, then guess what His answer is? Wait. Wait. Isaiah the prophet said, Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. If you wait on the Lord, your strength will be renewed. Amen. The waiting does not always have to be the hardest part. It can be a growing session. It can be a development process. Amen. It's what you make of it. Amen. Meaning the breakthrough's not happening yet, so I might as well learn something along the way. Amen. And not be in such a hurry to have this take place and that take place. Amen. I might as well learn something along the way. David had to wait. He got anointed. At his father Jason's house by Samuel, and it was decades before he became king. Yet the prophet spoke about him. You're going to be the king of Israel. But it didn't happen the next week. He had to wait. Job had to wait. He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. I don't know what in the world is going on. I've lost my children. My house is burnt down. I've lost my livestock and cattle. Everything that I have is gone. My wife, his 
disrespected me, rebuked me, told me to go kill myself and blaspheme God. I'm just as lonely and poor as I can be out here. I've got boils broke out all over my body. I'm hurting. I'm burning. I'm itching. I feel like I'm dying. And my best friends that I have are sitting here saying, go ahead and admit, repent. You know you've done something. Amen. You've done something wrong for God to bring all this stuff upon you. He was waiting for a breakthrough. And yet God had called him perfect. Nobody else in the Bible has ever been called perfect but Jesus Christ. And John was called perfect. Yet he was enduring this. And he had to wait. He said, the Lord giveth. And the Lord taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. I've not got rid of these boils. My wife still don't want to look at me. My children are dead and gone. I've not gotten my possessions back. But I don't know what's going on. Maybe God's testing me right now. And maybe you don't believe me, buddies. Maybe you think just because this has happened, maybe that I've done something terrible. But I'm here to tell you right now. God will bring me out of this. Amen. Just like the Hebrew boy said. He may not show up. He may show up. He may or he may not. But whether he does or not, we're not bowing down to that idol. Amen. We're going to wait on the Lord. And they did. He showed up. Hannah waited for a child and made an ultimate sacrifice to give that child over. The Shunammite woman had waited for a child her whole life. And when the prophet said, you're going to have one, she said, man, God, don't you get my hopes up. Amen. She had one. And about a decade or so later, yes. he died in her arms. But she expected, she expected what God had said she would have. He would have a son. And she said, God, I can't be over by now. And her faith caused her to be determined. And her determination caused her to pursue a breakthrough. And before the breakthrough came to her, she had to wait. The disciples waited for three days after Jesus died on the cross. All the teaching, all the miracles they had seen, all the lives they had seen changed, all the words they heard him teach, all the time that they had followed him, and now he dies on a cross. You know, that had to be, quite possibly, a little doubt right, rise up in their heads. They killed him now. This movement, this, this momentum, this, this message, this, all this love, all the miracles, all the power, he died on the cross. He really did die. What, what, what's happening? To the point that when Jesus walked into the room, Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it until I touch those scars. Jesus said, well, go ahead and touch him, Thomas. I am alive. But blessed is he who believes without seeing, who believes without touching. Just because I said, I'd be back. And they waited for three days. And Jesus came back. Jesus has confirmed our hope and our anticipation as we wait. I mean, we've got something to anticipate. Jesus said, if you believe in God, believe in me also. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you so. But lo, now I go to prepare a place there for you. And if I go there to prepare a place for you, I'm going to return to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may also be. Jesus confirmed it. He said, if it were not true, I would have told you. I mean, I don't want you to doubt this thing. I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm coming back to get you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we've been preaching and teaching and driving home the fact that there is an event that is taking place. That we have... That Christianity has classified as the rapture of when he will return in the clouds of glory and the saints are going up. The dead in Christ are already going to go up before us. Amen. And we're going up and we are going to be rescued from the horror that's going to befall this planet. World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, inflation, 9-11 has nothing. It's tragic as all those horrible events were. has nothing to compare to the seven-year tribulation that is going to fall upon this planet. But guess what? I don't fear that. 
Because I'm saved. Because my name's been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Hallelujah. And I love my friends. And I love my family. And I love my church family. And all I can do, church, as a Christian and as a leader, hallelujah, is preach this truth as hard as I can and love on people and let them know, come on, we don't have time for your break. We don't have time for these things that's all about you anymore. It's got to be all about Him. Because when those things happen in your life that are all about you, yes, it's going to hurt you. Yes, you're going you're gonna to mourn for this period or that period. But you'll get your eyes back on Jesus. But you'll say, you know what? This didn't work out the way I wanted it to. I wish this had to happen that way. But guess what? I'm still saved by the blood of the Lamb. And when Jesus comes back in glory, I'm going with Him. To all these other problems that I'm facing right now, they're nothing compared to the fact if I was lost and undone. And so many times the devil wants, yeah, I said the devil. The devil wants to get in people's heads and tell them, you need to fix this person. Oh, but you wish this was that way. Well, if it's not, then you ought to complain about it. And if you don't like this, you don't let it. Amen. But you've got to get those things out of your head because the enemy wants to put an obstacle in front of you. Yes, amen. To get your mind off the main thing. Amen. amen. My life is not where it needs to be. Amen. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have the job I want. I don't have this. I don't have that. Amen. There's a lot of things you don't have. There's a lot of things I don't have. Amen. Amen. The Lord get it. The Lord take it away. And that don't mean that we can't claim some things. And I know there's some people in this church that's claiming some things. And I am in agreement with you. Amen. Keep calling on the name of Jesus. Believe for that breakthrough. Believe for that healing. Yes. Believe for that restoration. But don't let those things that we're hoping for ever take precedent of Him. Because I'm going to tell you right now, anybody in this church, and I know some awesome people that have been through a lot of things, and they had to go through it alone. Meaning maybe they didn't have a spouse. But if they didn't have God, they'd never got through anything. I'm here to tell you something. There is something special and unique about someone when it's all, it's all they have. Baby. I've been blessed with a wife. And I've got children. And my mom and dad are still living, thank God. I've been blessed with all those things. And I would hate to lose any of those things. I've been blessed with a home to live in. And I didn't walk to work this morning. I, I drove my truck in. I've been blessed with some things. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, can, nothing can compare to what I have in Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's not redundant. That's not just talk. I'm here to tell you right now. Hallelujah. That's why miracles are taking place over in Africa. Because they don't have what we have over here. That's right. They don't have running water and heat and air and, and carpet on the floor. They live on dirt floors and they don't have anything. All they got is God. And so they, it's just second nature to believe that a, a missing leader can grow back. It's just second nature to believe that dead body can raise. It's just second nature to believe that that cancer size can just be gone. Because when he's all you got, you believe everything. But if you are spoiled with all these other things, what are we going to talk about that tonight? Ooh, Jesus calls us out in the book of Revelation. He calls out, I believe, this generation. Then we get stuck on those and we get comfortable. And we don't believe for the miraculous. Amen. Maybe Sarah got comfortable a little while. And that's when that nine years old, she said, you're going to have a baby. Because <laughs> Abraham was rich in his day. He had a lot of stuff. A lot of, a lot of belongings. Had people, had servants. They went where he went. He was rich for his time. Maybe she was spoiled on those things. And God had to show her. Amen. I didn't mean to go off on a tangent. But I'm here to tell you. We're waiting. You're waiting for God to move. Amen. But the church as a whole should be waiting for Jesus Christ to return. Yes. And many are, and Franklin Graham said on television recently, he looked at the screen and he said, Pastors, preach in times in your church. It's time. It's time to preach. And I respect that ministry. He said, Preach in times in your church. You see, so many people are getting away from those things. And we're talking about everything that's, that, that doesn't have. It's like we don't want to reach out for souls no more. We want to talk about 
happy-go-lucky things. And yes, I get happy about the Lord. Amen. Amen. But I've got a heart for souls. Amen. Amen. I want people to experience it, Lord, what I've experienced. That when I get an altar call and I ask if there's anybody in here that needs the Lord, I know in my heart, I got it. I don't question that. I'm not perfect. I repent. I have to ask for forgiveness. Amen. But I'm excited about the fact that when Jesus comes, Amen, we get to go to heaven. Amen. We get to go to heaven. There's nothing better than heaven. I love Sandy Cross. I love my home. I love CSC. I love, I love cookouts. I love to go to amusement parks and the beach. And I love to fish and play ball and all those things. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, they're going to take a backseat. Got to go. Amen. Jesus has come. Yes. There is nothing compared. Nothing on this earth can compare to what He has for me in glory. Oh, that's right. That's right. And I've done that. I let it change me. I let it change my heart. I let it change my mind. And I started getting my mind on the things that He has. That's and when you start thinking about Him instead of you, He'll change you. He'll change you. Well, should that mean we, does that mean that we let go of the people we love? No, you love them. He has blessed your life with them. He expects you to love them, take care of them, and nurture them. But well, we are in a waiting process right now. We're waiting for the return of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. What's He going to find us doing? What are we doing about it? What are we doing about our wait? Amen. You may be waiting for something today in your life to take place. Are you growing from it? Or are you agonizing over it? Is it weakening you and driving you further and further down? Why don't you go ahead and give the devil a black eye and learn something from it? And say, I am bound and determined to be strengthened by this. I am bound and determined to walk by faith and not by sight. Even though I don't have this thing that I'm hoping for right now, that God's going to either bring that or God's going to bring something better. Amen? Amen. God's going to bring me what I need, what He wants me to have. And in that time, I'm not going to cry no more. I'm not going to regret anymore. I'm not going to fall down about it and give up anymore 10,000 times. I am going to stand. I'm going to stand on His Word. I'm going to grow His Word. Amen. I'm going to worship. I'm going to serve Him while I'm waiting. Hallelujah. And if the breakthrough that I had asked at the beginning of this thing don't happen the way that I wanted it to originally, Guess what? Guess what I've become in the process? A strong, spirit-filled, worshiping machine for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I don't want Him to come back and find me wallowing in sorrow Amen. about something that didn't happen that I wanted. Amen. I want Him to come back and find me worshiping Him. Yes. Getting ready for heaven. Amen. Amen. So the waiting doesn't always have to be the hardest part. Amen. It can be that time of development. Anybody get anything out of this? Yeah.